it with the JS bin? Uh, yes, although I was trying to get that into a file as well, because then you can see the URL. Okay, cool. But well, we get well, it working first on JS bin. So. We're, we're live. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to another Batovi front-end training. Uh, with me this week is David Luecki, who's going to run the run the run the show, and also is Julian. Julian, what's your last name? It's like Kern. Kern, yeah. Kern. Um, and Julian is a DunJS contributor um, who specializes in the CanJS side of things. But he's got this really cool Vagrant project that has like a full DunJS stack in it. Um, so with that, David, you want to talk about can define. Absolutely. I thought we'll move today's training to teaching you German names. <laughs> All right. Um, define something in German. What is define in German? Definition. What? I can't. Definition, which is actually the same word as definition. Oh, right? Definition. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to pull up my presentation and share my screen. Um, there we go. I did this one uh, a while ago, I think. Right, can everybody see this? Yep. Yeah, perfect. Cool. All right, so um, the Define plugin we added in 2.1, right? Yes. Uh, it is still just a plugin, but uh, in version 3, it's going to become, well, yeah, in version 3, it's going to become part of CanJS core because it was so useful. Um, before the Define plugin, we had a bunch of different other plugins that were um, used like in different ways. You had the Attributes plugin. Um, you had the Setter plugin. So we had all those different kinds of plugins to define and compose properties on a map. And this Define plugin brings everything together into one, and you can use it very nicely. And it actually makes for quite powerful model definitions. Um, so what it does is, is it controls the behavior of a can map. Uh, you can do things like set a default value for a property, um, add custom converters, or use one of our standard converters. You can say what value um, is returned when it is read, so a getter. Uh, you can set the behavior when setting it. We'll go over that. So setters, uh, how it is serialized. So when you want to convert your map to an object presentation, you can customize that as well. And then also um, do something when a property is removed. Uh, there was a good example for that, which is probably the least common use case, though. So you see here, it replaces the can map attributes and setter plugins. They are deprecated. And we highly recommend to move over to this one. They're not API compatible, uh, so it's going to be a little bit of work, but it's definitely worth it because this is where our main focus is going to go on. So, cool. so let's yeah, go ahead. The way that I think about the Define plugin often is just like if you want full control over what happens inside the atter method of can map, this gives it to you, and hopefully soon also with. ES5 getters and setters, right? Uh, sure. Yeah, any property on an, on an object. Yeah, which is which is that's going to be. I, I'm kind of looking forward to that. Right. So um, there are. Uh, I'll put this. Let's let me pull this up here. I moved it away, of course. So if you can find the documentation in Can Map Define. It is still a plugin here. Um, and and there's. Three main things that I want to go want to go over, which is type, value, capital and lowercase. I'll explain the difference in a second. The getter, the setter, serialize, and move. Uh, let's start with value and value. Um, the difference between lowercase and capital is you can see right here. Um, lowercase is the actual value for the property, so a primitive value whereas capital is the initial constructor function that should be used to create the initial value. So basically, if you use capital value, this will, during initialization, call a new can.list. Um, for this one, it will we'll just initialize this primitive. Um, now, if you define it like this, define is always the property of the prototype. 
and then you just set your properties. I think for what we've been debating of making, if you pass a function instead of the object, it'll be a getter by default, right, in the next version. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm always debating what the default for you give a non-object there should be. I'm, I'm, we've talked yeah. about that. One, one thing, though, one point is if value, lowercase value, is a function, it will call that function, and whatever the return value is, um, that will be the, 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 value, the, the initial value set on that map. Right, so it's not just primitives you can have there. You can also have, also have functions there. Yes. So what is the difference if we put a callback in the lowercase value, uh, which returns can list, instead of the uppercase value, which is can list? This is pretty much, it's kind of a shorthand, really, right? I mean, we can try it if you want. No, that's a, well, yeah, I know what the difference is. It's, it's a difference, I think. There is a difference. One will have, so if you just put a function in return can list there, no, if you didn't do new, if you just did return can list, what that's actually going to have is the default value is can list. Like, it'll be, if you do name and read the name property, it will actually return you a function that is can list, the can list constructor function. And if you do this... That, that should be equivalent, right? No, then that's equivalent. If you put a new there, that's equivalent. So this this is a, a this capital value is a shorthand for this. Um, if you do okay, this is actually pretty good because if you want the, this actual function, then you use this. Because if you if you do this, um, then it would try to run the can list function, which is not what we want. Well, would that what would that do though? We're getting crazy, getting into Yeah, the what would that do? It would, um, that depends on how can map still behaves. Does it run extend on it? It still runs extend. So this is something you probably don't want. <laughs> so that's, that's, one of the can that's going to be like hard deprecated is extension without calling extend. Yes. So what that would do is it actually it would actually look very similar. You would get an extended can list if you just did value can list. So it would do this, which is the same as... You extend with no arguments. Yeah, it's the same as this, which is the preferred way we, we need to use it. Mm -hmm. Cool. That was interesting. It's interesting <laughs> how much you can actually like go in detail for something as trivial as the default value. Yeah. Okay, let's move to the next one. Um, the type is a converter function. So uh, the difference, and I think that's important, is the value is the initial default value. So when you call new my map, uh, the type is a function or a converter that will be run every time you set it. So um, for example, if you have this, and we run Let's Hold on, David. Give give one second to like. Let's see what this is. Yeah, like, slow me down when I'm too fast. Yeah. Um. So you have a my list that you're extending with a count function that, that retur just returns the length of the list, and then you're defining a is guest that's type boolean and a list that's type my list. Okay. So two things. Well, the first one is. If you console log those two things, it does what is expected. If you initialize it with is get, it gets true, see true as the string. So that's important. And the list with just an array, um, you will see that once we run it, that it gets converted to a Boolean true, and that the count, so this function, is being run. That means that this array has been converted to a MyList instance. So if you do something like instance.adder is guest and then set this to zero, um, which happens a lot, right? You, you, there's many, we have APIs all the time that use random values for Boolean, zero or one or string true or false, which you get often. So, so this is super helpful to have this kind of converter. 
Um, so if you use zero, then you see that this is converted to the Boolean false. Um, now, the other one was updating the list with another array. For example, one and two without a typo. Um, and we need a three, two. Um, you'll see again, this array got converted to the my list. Actually, let's try this. Console log my list instance adder list instance of my list. So you see this is an instance of my list. So this is, I find already pretty powerful because you don't have to do a lot of the worst thing you could possibly do is making if statements for inconsistent Boolean values or conversion or things like that in your component code or controller code. Um, the map or the model is the right place to do this. So, um, so what's the difference between capital T type and lowercase t type? Oh, um, good question. So lowercase type can be um, one of the default conver converters. I think they are here, listed here, right? So we have string, date, number, Boolean, HTML Boolean, which is different than Boolean because an HTML Boolean, an empty string uh, is also true. So if you have an HTML attribute that just looks like, um, like selected, that is still a Boolean true. Basically, well, to, to be clear, if you were two-way binding, if you were binding selected, like the presence of the selected attribute to some can map property in your components view model, what it would do is when selected came true, it would actually set selected <coughs> to the empty string um, on your view model, but you would want, it wasn't null anymore, or it wasn't undefined, you would want empty string to actually be true. So that's why we have this special HTML bool converter that, you know, is useful for those kind of situations. I just got a message that my font size was too small. Um, thank you. I'm going to try and make it bigger again. So for this one as well, I hope this is, this is nicer. Um, and then um, star was new. Um, it basically prevents conversion of, can, of objects into can maps. Uh, this is very interesting and important for performance if you don't need live binding or need to convert everything if you have a big data structure. If you don't need to convert like child data structures into a list or a map, then you can use the star converter and it'll just keep it the way it is. And uh, if you're running into performance problems with can initializing gigantic data structures with a can map, this is a, a huge help because most likely you won't display all of it anyway. So you, you don't need the live binding part. So uh, I, I don't know when we added this one. That wasn't part of the initial one, right? But no, a little later. I think it was two, two. But this is uh, really, really helpful for getting good performan uh, performance on large can map and list data structures if you don't need live binding. Cool. Uh, so I guess what I was getting at, there's a more there's another difference between lowercase type and capital T. Type. Oh yeah, we never and we never finished this one. Um, sorry. So basically, this is again the constructor function. The constructor function. This is run every time, right? Um, where is it? Yeah. No. So no. It, it, what capital ahead. type does is it checks if what's being passed is an instance of whatever the constructor function is. And if it is, it just lets it keep going through, right? Um, so it'll just say, if you, like, if, instead here, if you were, like, doing um, that line where you, your cursor is right there, if you did new my list, um, yeah. That would be the same one. It would, or if you, let's say you inherited from my list, and then you created, you passed that, something that was inherited from my list, you passed that. Well, 
the capital T type is just going to check, is this an instance of the constructor function? If it is, then just actually set that value. If it's not, pass whatever the past value was into the constructor and let that constructor make the correct instance. You could almost you could actually implement this yourself with lowercase type by doing like change list. Uh, oh, to lowercase. That, I was just gonna change it in the list. You could change that to lowercase type, and then you just have a function that takes your argument, checks if the, it's the instance. If it's oh, this, a, this, this is the old value, value, right? And then well, this would be the new value. It gets new value. The value what it was trying to be set. And it would just check, like, if new value is an instance of my list, return new value. Yeah. And then if it's not, return new my list new value. So one thing is, though, that this will always create a new list, right? It won't dot adder or replace the existing one that you'd have to do yourself. Yes. Okay. Yes. Anything else? We'll hop to the next one. Yep. Cool. Um, getters. They're pretty uh, they're pretty straightforward but super useful and probably the most common defined plugin functionality you'd use. Um, here I have an is drinking age setter. Uh, I did this when I was living back in Alberta in BC. The age is 19, and in the US it's 21. So we have to do some localization here, but it just returns if the age is more or equals to the current whatever the legal age is. Uh, in Germany it's 16, at least for beer and wine. Let's quickly try this one. I don't know if there's much more to say about that. Um, one thing that I like doing for this, um, when you load asynchronous things, anything, um, is to return uh, the promise here, um, because then in the template you can um, check if it's pending or is resolved, so you can show loading indicators and things like that. Yeah, all I was going to say is, are you going to show an asynchronous with the resolve? arguments and stuff, the last set kind of example. Mm, let me see if I have this in here. No, we only have setters. You wanted to f go the old value or last set? Uh, well, show this now and just show, I guess. Yeah, okay, okay, let's run this one thing at a time, so. Price, this returned true. If we change this to 16, it returns false. So what did, um, there well, was another. One, yeah. one thing is cool is just to show you can actually bind on this property directly. Like, this is a virtual property. Um, so, yeah, you can actually listen to it how you would listen to any other non-virtual property. And as it changes, um, this this callback function will get called. It'll be it'll be the event, and then the new value. Uh, every time. Okay. So all right, and then the value, and then if you change it here, you want to change what it's derived. So age yeah, to the age to twenty five. Okay. Change. Nope. It to true. Uh, it works. It changed to true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna add this because it wasn't really nice to see. So you see in the event handler now the value were, we changed the age 25 and then the drinking age value changed to true, which and is cool. One thing that you might want to just show is that serialize is not going to return this value, and we'll, I'm sure you'll talk about serialize later. Yeah. Just to kind of like introduce that as a concept. So we console log person dot serialize and you'll see it only returns the H. And so if this you is a virtual problem. The same thing is true actually as well, right? Pardon? If you do dot atter, I think the same person dot atter, I don't think you get Yes you yeah. don't get virtual properties. Yeah. 
uh, ever really. Yeah. How how would you like just we can you can do serialized true. I would include it, right? Oh, it doesn't work with Atter. Yeah, it only works with uh, serialized. It'll give it to you, but not Atter. There's no way. There's no way of getting them Atter right now. Actually, we could make some similar. Serialized is basically yeah. what is being used by um, Can Model to send the request to the server. And which Can is... Route. And Can Route. It's basically so. like the, you. You normally don't want these things serialized any virtual properties because they're derived from other values. So given the source values, you can get the derived values anyway, so that's why by default it's serialized false. Which makes sense. Yeah. Um, we had, you were talking about last set value, so, so we have... Yeah, this is, this is to do kind of getter, okay, yeah, so this is... Um, This is, so uh, you can do getter setters um, in, in combination. Maybe maybe do, well, let's do asynchronous getters first. So okay. last set value, but then there's another argument called resolve. And let's say, let, let's say the, I guess the example here would be yeah. with asynchronous stuff. You're, so you're like getting a list of, um, Let's say you've got a drop down, and for a list of states, you're get like when a person picks a state, you're getting a list of cities for it, right? So you could change this to like your sit your city promise. I, I want to kind of show it bifurcated. Well, or we could start with city promise, or let's just call it I guess cities. City, city, city. city right? We want state and city. Yeah, but you pick. You get your list of cities from the state that's selected. Oh, okay. So list we have cities. cities, and then you might initialize this with a state. I don't know if this is maybe person. I don't know what person would have hierarchical like this. Maybe you change the constructor to like I don't know uh, restaurant view model. <laughs> <don't know>. yeah. <laughs> right? Like that's the example that I'm thinking. address. Huh? Address. Yeah, address. That's a good one. Good, good call. All right. Um, so, so you might want your list of cities to depend on what state has been selected, and maybe you have some asynchronous behavior that gets those to cities. So, what you could, you could, what you might do is create like a get cities method above this that just given a. Um, no, like I mean, not a method, like a, a method, like uh, in its floating around in space. Oh. Just like let's just say this is like our AJAX method, just a pseudo AJAX method that gets cities. And um, yeah. maybe given given a, a state is just gonna like what it's gonna do is return a promise or a deferred, so you can use can deferred. And it's just going to return that, and let's just say after, you know, let's just do a, a timeout of like, you know, two seconds, and then uh, return, uh, resolve the promise to uh, like, you know, two cities, an array of cities or something. I forgot. I don't. I can't remember another city in Illinois. <laughs> Illinois, Rockford, or something. <laughs> Springfield. Yeah, there's not really another city in Illinois. Um, All right. So, okay. So now what? what we can do is let's say what we want to do is pass to get cities the state. So we have a state here, right? We might have a state that's just defaults to whatever. There we go. Okay. And then we say here, um, get. We're just going to call get cities. This dot add our state. And then um, that, do resolve. That resolve, right? Yep. And then you just return last set 
uh, here. What do uh, you? No, you don't need to do anything here. Oh, you don't need to. Like, okay. Yeah, it'll just be undefined until the resolve happens, and then it would be defined. If that makes there sense. All right. Uh, now we gotta initialize this somehow. And can we just bind to cities? Yeah. So this is this is the important thing about asynchronous. Um, I mean, it's nicer if you're gonna put this in a template and. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's it. see if we can um, do that. It, it, do you, oh, oh, go go ahead. Well, go ahead. I was gonna say you don't. So this is this is the kind of confusing part about uh, asynchronous um, getters that confuses a lot of people. So um, asynchronous getters. If you if 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 um, David right right here were to read a dot cities after cities, this would give you undefined, and the you these really these things these asynchronous getters really don't have a value unless you're binding to them. Once you bind to them, then it'll start observing changes in state and go get that value and keep it and only update when state changes. So whenever you pass this address to the view model, and if you were just to write, or, or to a view to stash, and you were just to list out the cities, try to iterate through them, well, that's going to set up a binding for you, so you don't really have to worry about it. Um, but if you're doing it in here, you've got to, you, you would have to set up the binding yourself and like bind on cities. And then at first it won't be defined, but eventually it will take on a value of um, the cities for that state. There we go. So it showed up after two seconds. Um, if you had this in a view in a template, it, it would be a lot nicer because <laughs> you would actually see how, how the they show up. But yeah, that was a that was a good example. Anything else for getters? Last set is the previously set value, so I guess in our case it will be undefined, right? Here. Maybe one question: How we can work with the resolved value? So is it after is it resolved? There is a promise, so I can't add attribute to the promise, so I have to resolve this promise again and edit values to the list. Mm -hmm. If you change the state, um, it will rerun this. Maybe if we want, if, if we resolve the promise and would, wouldn't would add a, another city, how we can do that? Maybe there's an input field and somebody type in Berlin, and and then we will add it to the to the list of cities. How you can do that? This should work here already, right? Like, uh, if you call the getter again, it'll just rerun this again, right? Yes. Well, if you call the getter again, what do you mean call the getter again? Sorry. So I think Julian was asking if. Um, can you modify this list of cities once you have it, like in here? Yes. We do something like um, no, a. You shouldn't modify that list of cities because it's like a derived value. Yeah. You wouldn't want to push anything to. I mean, you could, but you shouldn't, if that makes sense. So, so you you could do this. You could, but you but shouldn't. You should. <laughs> All right. right. Because uh, what you what you should do is. Well, in the can connect way of things working here, like can connect actually would add to it because what it would see is that like, well, you just created. I guess you can do it. I guess that's fine. It's just it's wonky. Can connect makes this all a little bit more elegant because what it does is it knows that okay, your list of cities you got by saying state equals you know Illinois. Right. So then, if any new uh, any new city is created, presumably it would have its 
there would be an association saying it belongs to Illinois. Can Connect manages the list of cities that belong to Illinois and would automatically insert it into the list for you. Um, doing it this way is all right. It's just um, things get tricky, or but that's I I don't. This is one of those can't connect. I think has solved the problem well, but there's not a glorious great solution. I think anywhere really. I don't know what like a a, a pure can JS without pulling and can connect and all of its abilities would look like a, a great solution. So yeah, I would probably just push it in, which is fine. It's just but but you can't push it in because it's not is 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 a promise. What's a promise? No, it's not a promise. It's not a promise. It's the actual value. This would be a promise if you returned it here, right? But you have this async resolving function, so you can you don't get the promise value. You actually only get the resolve value. Personally, I, I, I haven't run into a case where I needed that very often. I usually return the promises just to be able to show the loading state of get cities. I don't know if you have a good example where one, this will be better than the other, Justin. Or what'd you say? Do you know what I? Um, basically, I generally do this: return the promise so that I have access to the loading state. Yes, I, I do that too. So then, what I have is an I, I call that cities promise, and then I have another cities that actually has the real cities. Yeah, but if we do that, we have a promise as the result. We can't no, 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 we no, no, can't no. add we we can't add some. That's but you could add to the value. Right to the promise. So, show them what I'm talking about. So, you, what you would do here is cities, you change this to cities promise. This is actually a pretty common pattern I do quite often. And then I just return get cities and don't do the then. And then I make another cities. Uh, Not up. Getter, which has, the, uh, which has those arguments. And then I do this dot at her city's promise, yeah, dot then resolve. And I like doing it this way a lot because then you have the city's property, which is nice, and okay. then, but you have city's promise for being able to do is pending and things like that. Okay. That's good. Cool. Um, I think we had two more. We have uh, set. Um, this is the example that we basically had with the asynchronous getter. Um, you can do the same thing um, with asynchronous setters. Uh, but basically, what you can do with setters in general, let's copy this, uh, is you can just take a value and um, massage it. So in this case, what we do, we get an ID property that's a string and then say, now find one of our message model and then set that value. Um, now again, here we could probably do the same with the promise pattern, right? Return it here. So the message promise property will be set to the, this promise. And then we can do, I guess, an async getter for the actual message property too, right? Um, I don't have a good working example for that. Sorry, what what was your what were you message properties? Uh, what, what would you use a getter for here? Here message. Oh yeah. yeah, you could do it. I would still use a getter for this. Big, well, I don't know. That's I, tricky. I, I, there's there's found, an overlap, right? Well, yeah. I guess I've found this well. The situation where this can kind of happen, where you want a, really what you want is a message. Well, I found this where there's not message promise. You have a message setter or a getter, and they kind of work weirdly together. So an example is, let's say I went from my application. I had a list of items, a list of messages, let's say. 
and there was a button to go edit the list of messages. Now, sometimes what, what you want is, well, you've already loaded that message, right? So you take them to the message page, the single edit message page, and you say, here, here's the message. You pass that to the component. Here's the message from the, the message list component. And you just say, here, here you go. But what if the person refreshes the page? You want that ID of the message to be in the URL, and then you want to be able to load the message from the ID. Right? And there's this tricky part where, like, if you really want good performance, and you take someone from, like, a list of items to editing a single item, but you want that page refreshable, if you don't want to do a, an extra load there to get to that editing page to load data you've already loaded, then sometimes there's this getter setter that I, I did get working in Bitballs where you can kind of have your cake and eat it too, where if the ID is passed, well, then we'll do an, an AJAX request and load by ID. And then if a message object is passed, well, then we have the message anyways. And that's where you're using the, like, um, uh, the last setter to kind of do all of this. And that's, I don't, rem I've, I've got it working. I do not have it ready. <laughs> and it is a little tricky to figure out. Maybe that's something for a, a, a gist, a den or a, a, a JS bin addendum to this sometime later. Does that make that does that use case make sense? Do you know what I'm talking about? I was thinking on how I'd write it out, but it would be a lot to actually. But do you get the use case? Well, for for the setter itself, we we want to distinguish between getting the uh, ID and and getting an ID string and the, the promise, right? So you have to combine this with an asynchronous getter when there is the promise. So let's see if I can get it together. And you can tell me if it's wrong or not. If type of ID string. Yeah, to be honest, I don't actually remember my setup. And I think you would actually need, like, to make sure for me to make sure to say, like, oh, yeah, that's totally right, I would actually need to see it work, which is a little beyond what I think you can, you can Yeah, do. that's true. All right. Um, maybe we can... Well, we, wanted... this, uh, uh, we should conclude it this way. This kind of craziness is possible with getters and setters. It just takes a little bit of... a decent amount of thought. Um, but do, do, I guess what I'm saying is, do you get the use case I'm talking about? I want to make sure I'm clear about that so that if people are listening and trying to figure out what the hell we're talking about right now, they at least I get the use to get it. where this is the appropriate solution for it. Well, isn't that the use case where you have an ID that's a string and you want to return a promise? Or was that... that it's, it sounded more it's complex. Not a promise. You don't want a promise. You want the actual message. <laughs> In the end, you want the template of the actual message. Right? Maybe you want a little promise metadata somewhere else when you're actually having to asynchronously load the message because you don't already have it. But what you really want is a component where you can say, here's message ID or here's the message itself. And everything just kind of works, if that makes sense. I remember what it was. It was a getter that looked at the last set, and if it was a message, it returned that value and never actually like, did the resolve. I think I did the getter, but I don't care about how I did it. It's the use case. And where you see that use case often. Do you understand the use case? <laughs> yeah, but I don't know what, where, what another case... Well, it's like when you open, like your email window, right? If you have like a list of emails and you click on one and it's already returned, then... You don't want to request you show it, it, right? Yeah, you exactly. show it right away. But if you someone passed you a link and you, you want to load it up, well, you need to go get that data. Yeah. And how to make that seamless from the perspective of the view model and testing and things like that, that's 
tricky-ish, but is solvable with appropriate use of getters and setters. So, anyways, let's let's move on. So uh, we have two more serialize and remove. Um, serialize we already talked about pretty much. Um, you can de define what kind of um, properties. Let's copy this. You can declare what kind of properties you want to be serialized or not, um, and also in what way they should be serialized. So uh, in, in this case, our message is the actual, this is an async setter, so it gets the message from a, a model and then sets the value but if we want to serialize it, we want to return the message ID. I guess this is going to be a little easier if you do something like this, and then say I have a typo somewhere. Comma up above serialized. Okay. Also, that value would be shared. You wouldn't want to ever write value like that. Yes. Oh, that is actually. See, this is a very common mistake, and I made it. If you want to return an object, you actually do do this because. And we did this. Um, I did one training with Alexis where we actually talked about exactly this case. Um, what you really want to do is return a new object for for every new instance because otherwise this object will be shared throughout every every instance. Yeah, on the app state, there's almost never going to be another instance, but it's just good to not be in the habit of doing yeah. it. Yeah, like this is the best, the common, the right pattern to do it. Uh, this is what happens when you're in a hurry. All right, so um, like you see here now, the message is serialized with its ID. Um, and then we could also say serialize false, which will not serialize it at all. So this is just an empty object now. Um, and we already did before, if you have a getter, that's a virtual property, you most likely don't want it serialized because it is derived from other properties, so technically you don't need it because it's always calculated out of other properties. But if you do, then you can set serialize to true for that getter as well, and then it'll show up in a serialized object. Uh, say it again, the serialize method is used by can model and can route to um, to serialize the route status state and the model when you send it to the server. There we go. And, yeah, I saw your thumbs up in the corner. Okay, um, one more remove uh, is called whenever that property is removed. Uh, I made a simple example here that basically just says uh, if message is a can model and you you say something like um, a dot remove message and this remove is being called and if it's removed from the view model or from the map then call destroy on it right away. Um, this doesn't work if you set it to undefined, right? No. On so some, you actually have to call remove specifically in order to get this. Remove adder is the oh, method. Dang it. There. Remove adder um, to get this functionality. There is not an ES5 hook if you would do something like. Yeah, there's not a delete hook, huh? No. Oh, they got getters and setters, but no. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but okay, so let's. There is a better example, I think, of when remove hook is useful. And if you actually look at the define docs that make model year, is a really good example. Where um, is that at the top? Right in here. Uh, wait, maybe it's in. There's a example somewhere. Right there. <laughs> You open up the JS. Oh, well, why is it not working? That's weird. It's not working? Hmm. Maybe it is. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it's a little slow. Huh. I'll the main model here is having like dependent drop downs, which is used to be quite a complex thing to do, but may, is being made I'll pretty simple. Um, 
Anyways, so the reason is, is okay, so if you look back at the example, if go, go back up to the demo, let's say you changed four to something else, to Nissan. And you'll notice that we need to load the Nissans, and then we need to load, like, the years for Nissans. Um, so every time you change Nissan, essentially, they've, when, or sorry, whenever you change the make, the selection for model and the selection for year needs to be removed. So that's exactly what happens. So if you look at the JavaScript code and you look for remove adder, there's going to be a remove. So that removes, so whenever you remove the make ID, that removes the model ID. And whenever you remove the model ID, if you go down to model ID, where is it? Oh, there. You can see it also removes the year. So this way you can kind of get these cascading removes, which is really good. Yeah, this, I mean, this is a long, but only long because of the fixture data. Um, this used to be pretty complex to do before, um, in yeah. general, having, like, dependent dropdowns and things like that. Uh, I think I had oh one more thing um, we have can route map so can route is observable it is a map behaves like a map uh, but because we like to keep our application state separate from can route we have this fun new functionality I think it was in 2.2 as well um, to map the route to an application state and that allows you to use the define plugin to define how your route is being serialized out of your application state. Uh, we talked about routing an application state, I think, two weeks ago or three weeks ago. So I don't want to go too much into detail. Unfortunately, I blew up my, my demo, which is kind of sad. <laughs> I don't know if I can get it fixed in, in 10 minutes. Um, I wanted to basically show how you can um, having a, a state that's mapped to the route down here, having an app state that's mapped to the route, if the ID is being set, you want to make a request to the actual model data, and then when you want to serialize it, you want to do the same thing we already did in the serialize demo and say um, return this.adder post dot ID so that the route will be serialized as a string. Mm -hmm. But I think it's it wasn't working and I'm not entirely sure why. So I don't know if you want to if you can well, see what's wrong with it <laughs> right away. Um, what is the what's so nothing's happening the setter isn't even being called? No which and I think it should reset the route. So I tried like changing the the link like to to like twelve, um, and then rerunning it. But if you click this, it's still not. Can you can you, um, can you just type in the console uh, window dot location dot um, cache? Is it using push state? So no, it doesn't. I doubt it unless you include the push date plugin. But the fact that you're clicking on the window location isn't changing. Wait, what's your HTML look like? Yeah, this URL looks wrong then. Is your URL wrong? Oh, yeah, that was oh, my, my fault. So we, 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 we can use the route helper here. Oh, you can't use slash. Okay, so this is the problem. No, it, it needs to be... Um, your route can routes URL. shouldn't be using... Well, yeah, but you're see you have can dot route and you have a slash there. You shouldn't have a slash there when you're using push uh, the hash change. I thought it used to work. Okay, but we want to use the route URL. Work, but it it we're if it does work, we're, it's probably because we're just like removing that slash for you. All right, so I'm making a route URL here now because this is a new 2.3 helper, so we can use that one, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, and then set the post to um, 10. So this should hopefully fix our URL. Yeah, there you see 
in the bottom. It's a little small. It shows block and then 10, which is kind of okay. nice. So when you click on it, what happens? And now we got... Now it worked. Um, there's a lot of... Was the ID. Yeah. Which is, which is fine, which is correct. Yeah. So we returned this, uh, and then, oh, we just, how do I uh, fixture the request parameter? How do, how do they get this one again? Request.data.post. Request.data.post. There we go. All right, I'm going to probably fix my my um, HTML. So we have, we return this promise with that ID. Um, that is being returned as this. And then we can, so it quickly showed the loading post. Yeah. Uh, and then we need post.value.id, which should be it. Now you could just console log to make sure I'm right. But it's request that data of post. Oh, now we got it working. Almost. Yeah. Request data dot post. Okay. And then just put in like in your else ID equals post dot value that ID. Sorry? Here? Well just put like no, just put ID so you know that at least that else is being re rendered. That else. Oh. No, nope, it's already being rendered. Oh, because there is no post. Okay, that's why there is no post object yet, right? So you click that because there is no. Yeah. Thing. So it did show the loading post, but why is it hmm, post value dot id? Because you're never actually setting the post. You're just making the AJAX request, but there's no callback to actually do. Oh, you're returning it as a promise. Hmm. Yep. Uh, hmm, I'm not sure, actually. Let's take a look at it. What? Yeah, that's what I... What I... Value ID. Text. Can, uh, is your state global? So app state, just get rid of, well, can you just write app state in your console? Oh, here? Yeah, just do app state. Does it give it to you? Then do app state dot get dot, or at or dot post and see what it gives you there. Um, Undefined. Which doesn't make any sense because, well, it was a promise <laughs> for a while. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll have to check it out later. Yeah, I can fix that and post it later. Um, what I wanted to show, though, is that you can use this for um, turning your route, which in this case is just slash block slash 10, um, from your app state into an actual AJAX request to assemble your application state, and then also serialize it back into a route. Um, oh, that's not going to be possible. That's the problem, post.id, because that's not the, there's no ID oh, yeah. there. But this is. No, because yeah. the route is going to try to re-serialize itself. It's going to oh. be indefined, and it's sending you back to the other URL. Yeah. That's what's okay, happening. Okay, yeah. Here. OK, you're right. Can we, seri we can't serialize the promise at all, or does it does well, it give us? I, there's no async serialize. You would need somehow that, which yeah. Instead, what I would do is actually just have my like a post ID property that is, and then you would actually call that uh, as your serialize. I mean, it's kind of hack, not great, but. Um, 
you could do that is get it will get the post. Oh, but post is still a prompt, but it do an asynchronous getter for the ID. Yeah. So kind of like. Um... Or what I would actually just do is what you could just do is set the post inside the post. You could set post ID inside the post setter. We could just do this dot after dot post ID. Oh, I don't know what you're doing, but oh, you want to set it? Oh, we yeah. could just before the no 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 whoa. <laughs> Boom. Sorry, that was a typo. No 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 no. What you have is fine. Keep what you have. You could just in before the return just do this dot after post ID ID. Oh ID, yeah. And then your get. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then the getter would just return this. And then the getter I would return the post ID. And then remove that get function. Now, in reality, the way I would I would not do it this way, I would have I would not do it this way. I would I would tie the route to post ID and just make post a async getter of post ID. We've inverted how it should really work. Uh, one second, I'm gonna just quickly wanna try um, post value dot ID. This is an object. Oh, post ID. I don't know what you're doing, but let's 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 write it the way that people should write it. If you don't, all right. Like you shouldn't you be using setters for side effects in this way. It's much better to derive your data from your stateful data. So the better way would, would be changing it so it's post ID down there and post and then and then you have this is just gonna read this dot after post ID. Mm -hmm. And then you get rid of this would become a getter. Yeah. Oh, are you going to use the resolve, or you can do it as a promise? doesn't matter. Yeah, we can probably still do it as a promise. All right. So this is reading post ID, and then we just map post ID to... Um, and then you'll need to change your template so that it's post ID. Post equals 12, post... Post ID. Okay, that should be... I would I did want to show the ID so post on value dot ID because we're returning that here. Yeah. Oh yeah, this needs to be post ID. No, just post. Yeah. That didn't have to change, but Oh that doesn't matter. You don't need to change that post. There we go. Okay, that worked. Hooray. Okay, if we got it fixed. I'm I gonna show the getter is so much nicer than doing it as setters. In general you should I mean in general, side effect things are bad in setters, right? You should just be converting, maybe not doing a set, I don't know, that kind of thing. Um, getters are where it's at. You're deriving your data from something else. It is a derived data, yeah, from the post ID, that's true. Cool. Awesome. Uh, Thank you, David. But why we did have this post uh, attribute in the state in the app state is, is, is it is it needed to or is it is it is it a good way to have the post attribute in the in the app state I think the app state is, is routing and have nothing to do with this post with the data yeah so you say you know, the components would fetch those data well there is global data that you you need right not necessarily the post but um, in most apps, the user object and things like that, um, you probably do keep at the global app state. Okay. Yeah, so D David's right about that. I would say that if you have a really 
stupidly simple application. All right, you know, it's just all it is is getting a post, and that's that's it. And you're not even going to need to create components really. You just need to get some data and have a template, put it up on the page. I'm all right with it, but I would agree that at you know if your app's going to be any more complex than that ever, you should put it in a component and have the the route pass the post ID to the component and let the components view model basically load this post the way that it, it's kind of doing here. Um, but David is also right in that the session is something that is almost always, uh, or the user object, for whatever session, that is something that is often in the app location view model, which, by the way, we should call this application view model now instead of app state. That's, that's yes, yes we want to change that. There. You need one more in the can route binding. Oh, oh yeah. And that route dot map. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. all I got. Thanks. It was about David. an hour. Really that appreciate it. Yeah. A minute over an hour. So thank you everybody. Um, hopefully I'll edit out that part where we were confused. Um, and uh, hopefully we're never confused. Uh, Define plugin, which is probably one of the best parts of CanJS and one of the most unique parts for sure. Um, so thank you, David. Thank you, Julian, for joining us. And hope to see you next week. You're welcome. All right. Bye.